Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So I, I don't want to talk about any any Corona news right now. Okay, we we all know. Okay, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've every, every man has his limits. I've ran out of mine. Right. I think I think throughout the day, getting the doom and gloom report, I, I think is is. Uh, is sufficient. We don't. We don't. We don't need to extend it in the overnight. So everybody kind of knows what we need to do. Stay safe. So the biggest question is always, and I, I've, I've been getting this on, on a daily day basis, uh, especially when you get any type of movement back uh, with the futures. And you know, is this the bottom? Is this the bottom? And again, if you've been watching the videos, um, we're nowhere near a bottom. Okay, we're absolutely no near. We're absolutely nowhere near a bottom again for all the reasons we've been giving now for for weeks okay but you know it, it came to you know i started thinking about it and you know i, I want to kind of share how i start looking at a bottom or at least how i start looking at uh what a bottoming out process looks like okay um again who's to say when that's going to be that could be tomorrow that could be two years from now okay we don't know but th there's specific things that i look for in a rounding bottom, okay? Um, eventually, the stocks that are going down on news, right? Let's just say all the stocks, okay? Um, we, have a, we have a very, very aggressive catalyst right now, okay? Um, we haven't seen a catalyst like this in a very, very long time, okay? And the problem is nobody knows how this movie is gonna end. We believe, we're optimistic, we're hopeful, but again, hope, you know, hopium, right? The drug of hopium um, doesn't work, okay? So we have to be realistic. And when I look at a bottoming out process, um, I always look at stocks stop going down. Now, again, that sounds very simplistic. It sounds very moronic to say. It's all true, but this is all reality. Stocks eventually get tired. The way stocks get tired on the way up, right? And there's a roundabout top exhaustion, quote unquote, blow off top. The same way stocks get tired going down, okay? Sellers are aggressive on the way down. The catalyst is there. They're punching through walls. They're, you know, they're going, you know, sales like knife through butter. They're killing you. Uh, shoot first, ask questions later. Eventually, sellers get tired as well, and they run out of shares. And the short sellers realize something is way oversold. Again, this is probably not that time, okay? But I start looking for clues, okay? I start looking for uh, many signs that stocks are at least stabilizing. Sellers are at least comfortable at those levels. They might not know it subconsciously that they're tired of selling, but they are. So I start looking for signs. Number one, again, stocks just stop going down on bad news, okay? The same catalyst that took us down is the same catalyst that eventually, no matter how bad the news is, and traders start going numb. So for example, we knew how horrible 9-11 was. We knew how horrible uh, terrorism was. We knew how horrible the mortgage crisis was. We knew how, un uh, how, how uncomfortable and how horrible people losing jobs and people losing their homes. Eventually, okay, people started to learn how to live with, with all the bad news. Okay, it's almost like a horrible marriage, right? People get married, they love each other, it's, 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 it's marital bliss. Two years later, they can't stand each other, they can't have a conversation for five minutes, and the next thing you know, 10, 15, 20 years go by, they're numb to each other. They're numb to each other. They don't hate each other, they don't love each other, they just know that they're there. They're like a piece of, they're like a fern, right? They're like a fern, it's like a plant in the corner, they know they're there. Eventually, trading is exactly the same way. Stocks get tired, traders get numb, a thousand point gap ups are normal, 2000 point declines are normal, everything is normal. Now, what we saw today, okay, what we saw today, I kind of liked, okay, we'll get to that in a second, okay. Um, the most important part, in my opinion, is stability to that numbness. And we have to stop for, for us to have any form of a rounding bottom, okay, and sellers to get tired and traders to go numb. Futures have to stop 
expanding overnight. The cash market just has to stop. We can't have, as soon as the market closes, down 800 points. As soon as the market closes, we're down 1,200 points. The, you know, the spies can't go down lock limit five minutes after the futures, you know, after the, the, the market closes. That can't happen. The, the, the market has to contract. The futures market has to contract. We have to start going from down 1,000 to down 500 to down 200 to flat to hell, even up, right? Again, we're not there yet, but that's what has to happen. So for example, today after the close, you know, I, this is the first day I actually have a watch list for tomorrow, All right? And I'll give you my reason in a second. This is my first day I actually have a watch list for tomorrow. And then you look after the close, right? Tesla comes out with some news, strongest stock today, biggest move today, blah, 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 for the exception of maybe Amazon point wise. Biggest move today after the close, they come out and say, well, we're suspending a temporary plant. Our cash at hand was this and blah, 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 blah. And the stock is getting killed and everything's five, six dollars, three dollars off, off the levels, ten dollars off the levels where I want to buy them for tomorrow. Again, we'll see what happens tomorrow. That's why I keep on saying is, you know, I, I kind of like the action today. And I did. I thought I thought today was actually the first day that we had a couple of things. We didn't have this crazy volatile swing up and down a thousand points all day today, right? Everything today was up 50, up 300, up 150, up 200, right? The, the futures trading was, contra it was, it was, um, uh, was getting tighter. The channels were contracting. That was good. And the most Im important part, what I saw today, this is the first time I saw this in a month, right guys, in a month, that stocks were just grinding higher, right? Just grinding higher. Futures were going like this, dipping, dipping up, dipping, dipping up. And these stocks were not selling on these dips. These were very, very good signs. And I, and I, and I, said, you know, I said this this afternoon, and I go, look, man, there's this this a really good chance that we're gonna rally. You know, these stocks are gonna start taking out highs at, at, towards the end of the day, and they did. I mean, you had Tesla exploding, uh, you had NVIDIA exploding. Um, a lot of names exploded. Um, Roku got stronger, which I really like for tomorrow as well. Um, so we started seeing good signs today, right? And I said, well, you know, maybe if some news doesn't come out overnight and it's anything's crazy, you know, maybe we have another rally tomorrow. And I started looking at the cues and I, and I said, well, let, you know, let me, let's dive into this. Again, I'm not saying this is a bottom. Forget about it. Again, we all know this is not a bottom. But again, there's always tradable opportunities to the long side of multiple days if the market starts to stabilizing without new materialistic news. And I looked at the cues and I said, well, wait a minute. Now we have, this is a daily chart in the cues, right? Although they look terrible and they got rejected off the five day moving average, right? We see five days, again, the birth of the trade, the shortest term in interval of sentiment. I did turn around and I said, well, wait a minute. If you look at the cues, and again, we have to start looking for some positives. Again, we can't go through doom and gloom on every little thing we talk about, right? So I started looking at the cues and I turned around and say, well, we just, I just realized that, you know, the cues have closed on green candles, right? Four out of the last five days. Now, what does that mean? It means the close of the day was higher than the open, right? That's a positive. A day of contraction of the futures market, which we had today, was a positive, right? Stocks not going down 900 points after the close on any type of announcement to be determined. As of right now, on you know, I'm looking at right now, uh, I'm looking at right now, and the spies are spies are down one percent, right? They're down one percent. So basically, taking down today's today's uh, today's uh, any type of gains. Now, how does that work for tomorrow? And now look, if the spies Again, if, if the market kind of engulfs whatever news is coming out overnight, fresh materialistic facts coming out, and they start confirming today's prices tomorrow, then again, this cycle of higher closes, right? Higher closes than opens is going to be intact. And the most important part about tomorrow's session is if we can reclaim today's highs and start building, then we have a multiple day run in our hands. Then all those things we just kind of talked about, market getting numb, with no materialistic news, the market's kind of getting, market participants on the sell side are getting tired. Maybe we can have a multiple day rally. We will see, said the blind man. That's the whole point. We will see. Again, I still don't feel comfortable taking anything overnight. I still believe uh, the ranges for the most part every single day are very, 
uh, exceptional, okay? And if you wait for these confirmation channels, you could do very, very well, but at least, again, baby steps, right? Fingers crossed, you, you have to start somewhere. I, I, think, I think the traders globally, right? I think the traders globally need to hang their hats on something this weekend. If you can't leave your house, and you're going stir crazy and you don't want to watch the news anymore because it's like the freaking Grim Reaper entering your house at every single second of the day. You need to have some sort of optimism, right? You really do. We need to have some sort of optimism. So if we can have all these factors I just talked about today kind of spill over into tomorrow and the market gets bought on that dip and they start confirming today's prices, again, I think it could be a little bit tiny baby step forward to kind of a recovery. Again, we're not at the bottom. Don't think we are. You know, we're, we're talking about now, you know, New York City now is up to 3,600 confirmed cases. Again, you freaking donkeys. This is what happens. You go to St. Patrick's Day, right? You go boozing and drinking. Everything's all good. Oh, anything's going to happen. Um, but it's, again, it's a right step in the direction. So uh, let's talk about today's day. Again, you, you don't need to have overnight positions. You, you really don't. There's a lot of um, there, there's a lot of really good value throughout the day. Again, for all you guys who have been kind of watching this broadcast now for a while, you know, you kind of know where we stand by now. Uh, again, if you're having trouble in this market and again, your, your, your whole process is based upon daily charts, again, they're skewed, they're flawed, they're damaged. Uh, the, the ranges are the purest form of getting alpha. It's just the reality. And, and, you know, again, we've been demonstrating the power of the pivot for a very, very long time. This isn't like two months, you know, We've been doing this for, you know, we've been trading pivots for eight years. For eight years, I've been showing uh, the power of the pivot. So if you are having trouble and you'd like to uh, check out the live webinar, again, everybody's home. Uh, you know, again, there's two pure, you know, pure forms of income potential right now with everybody not working. You have online casino, okay, or you have the you have the market, or you have the market. And again, it's very very tough beating an online casino considering uh, the odds are stacked against you. So let's talk about this. So. You see this right here. So again, same game plan today, like the other day, waiting for channels to develop and confirm, take cash on the way up, break even as you stop. And again, I, I said this every single day, anybody who's trading with us should never trade in any fear, okay? Uh, trade with complete confidence, business as usual. And again, you can see how aggressive these pivots were. They weren't all great, okay? I caught two, like a schmuck, uh, that I didn't make money on, but there was some really good stuff. So let's talk about this Amazon, was definitely the point mover of the day, uh, 1848, 1850 build. Amazon just went just went nuts, absolutely nuts. Uh, here was the 1850, right? Here was the 1850, it started building, started confirming 1870, and Amazon just went nuts, went to uh, 18, 1945. You just saw huge call buying, right? Huge call buying the whole day, uh, big, big move there. Netflix has just been a machine. It's just been it's just been just a monster. 320 rejection three times pre-market uh, needs to build. Here was Netflix. Right? Here was Netflix. Three, you know, you see this? 320, 320 just exploded, right? Went to 347. Uh, Roku. Roku. The initial move on Roku was very, very good. Uh, the second entry, I'm a schmuck. I forgot to do a second entry. I bought it the first time around. Uh, it was one of my losing trades of the day. Uh, but anyway, the initial move was pretty big here. 69, 60, 69, 75 needs to build, and it exploded. I mean, Roku really, really exploded. Uh, here's the 69 right here. Here's the whole 69, uh, 75 area. The first move was like the 73, big, big move there. Uh, BYND, if it builds below, can flush 50, 40, 50, 50. If it, if, excuse me, 50, 40, $50, whole number. If it builds below, can flush. Here was BYND, right? Here was BYND, here was the 50, 40, 50 area, went all the way down to 48 before it reversed. Uh, here is one of my two losers on the day, uh, AKAM was way too thin, was way too thin. I bought the stock and I looked at it and I'm like, okay, buyers, still waiting, so wound up losing 60 cents there. Again, no big deal. This was obviously the first big, Pivot on Tesla here, 381, uh, 381, 382 needs to build. Tesla just went insane, okay? Tesla went absolutely insane. Here's the 381 right here, 381, 382. First move was, was to 400, right? First move was to 400. Then there was another pivot I put into the channel. I'll show you guys in a second. It went from 427 
the 451 monster move. Again, Tesla's the best stock out there. Uh, it really is best stock to trade. Uh, Chewy 33 needs to build. You can see there's some really good value today. Uh, Chewy 33 needs to build. Here's a 33 on Chewy. Went all the way to 35. Big move on Chewy. Uh, Zoom exploded. Uh, 124.50, 125 needs to build. Uh, you, you know, you get the, you get the, you know, you get the idea. There's some really good value today. Here's a 124.50, 125 went to 131. Uh, work, work again for all you guys that traded work. Fantastic. I actually traded work. Made some money. Didn't make 21. <sighs> anyway, uh, 1880, 19 needs to build. Uh, you know, I basically did okay with it. When I say okay, literally okay. And as soon as I sold it, it went actually down a dollar. I was like, wow, good sale. And then I turned around, the stock went to 21. Da 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 da. Okay. So uh, Roku had a big initial move. Tesla had a monster move. Chewy had a monster move. Amazon had a monster move. Uh, work, new highs, and then it really went new highs. Um, ZM, new highs. Uh, again, good. You know, 1871, nice trade. Yeah, that's, it was good. Uh, so here's where I screwed up, right? Here's where I screwed up here. Um, I set everything second entry, and like a schmuck, I took, I didn't wait for the second entry. It cost me a buck on the trade. Schmuck. Again, guys, always remember, there's nothing the market can do to us that we can't do to ourselves. Uh, I would have had a really, really big day if it wasn't uh, for uh, my Roku, my Roku kind of stupidity. Uh, but again, it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. NVIDIA, I caught twice. Did I even put the NVIDIA trade in here? I don't even think I put, put this in here for some reason. We traded NVIDIA twice. I caught, I caught NVIDIA twice for like three, three and change. Uh, I, think, I think I might have by accident put it on Twitter. I think I did. I think by accident I put it on Twitter um, on, my, on, my, on my regular account. I apologize, guys. But we traded NVIDIA twice. I caught it for like three and change. And here was the second, here was the second uh, pivot on Tesla. 427 sneaky area needs to build. And, you know, here's Tesla just absolutely exploded. Here's the, four, here's the 27 right here. Here's the 27 right here. And it went all the way up to 452. Huge move there uh, as well. Uh, Tesla new highs on deck. Uh, huge, right? Huge. And uh, again, because of the Corona scare, my man Jean Francois in another world. Obviously, we're all we're all isolated. I will take the chance and kiss you in your mouth. Mwah! Right? Amazing day. Absolutely. Some really good value today. Uh, really, really good day. And again, that's the name of the game. Tomorrow, uh, again, it's a new day. Okay. Uh, new day. Again, same game plan. If we gap down. Okay. If we gap down. Um, the value will be to the upside. Obviously, if we gap up, you know what? Before we gap up, I know I'd like to say the value is going to be to the downside, but I want to give, I'm only going to give them a little bit of time, but I want to give, if we do gap up tomorrow, I want to give the bulls a little bit of time to kind of wash away some, some late shorts, right? Or early shorts and maybe start confirming today's prices. Maybe the queues can have a higher close four out of five days. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. I love you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow on the, on the, on the webinar. Bye-bye. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.